They are grand, majestic, and geometric. Rose windows leave us with many wonders. But do they mean anything? Though they adorn cathedrals and churches, rose windows were meant to explain universal laws of the cosmos and the psyche, according to the medieval thinker. So religious or not, after watching this video, you may start to see rose windows a bit differently. Hi, my name is Sandra and welcome to Chasing Gods, where we deconstruct symbols and myths and find out how they connect to science. If you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe. And if you value my content, consider becoming a Patreon supporter and help the channel grow. Just click in the link in the description box below. On this episode, you're going to learn a brief history of the rose window, its fundamental themes, and how to analyze each of these themes by decoding some examples of rose windows. The traditional rose window, the one with geometrical shapes spanning out from a center and made of stained glass, blew up in Gothic France. We're talking about the 12th and 13th century, particularly in and around Paris. From there, stereotypical rose windows spread throughout the world, starting with neighboring countries such as England, Spain and Italy. Rose windows didn't appear out of thin air. Its ancestor may have been the oculus, a simple circular hole without glass or design, and it's typically situated on the roof of ancient Roman religious buildings, such as the famous Pantheon, originally built in the first century BC. The oculus was meant to let the air, light, and rain travel through. It could have been fashioned into other shapes, but the circle was a favorite in houses of worship, as it's a symbol of universal perfection across the world, as early as humans could express themselves visually. The ancient Chinese, ancient Egyptians, Sumerians, Hindus, and Native Americans all venerated the circle. By the 9th century, oculi, plural for oculus, started to evolve, and their traceries began to be used for designs. The designs would get increasingly complex and began to take the shape of a rose, hence the term rose window which didn't take its name until the 17th century. The windows absorbed cultural styles of the regions they were built in. Great examples are the Troia Cathedral in Italy and the San Lorenzo Church in Spain, which bear clear Islamic influence due to the Moor occupation of the 8th century. This is also the time that the oculi began to evolve, which could indicate the possible origin of the designs inside the oculus altogether. By the 12th century, the archetypal rose window, whose style is known as Rayonnant, was born in France. The most famous one is that of Notre Dame de Paris. From this Rayonnant style are born many more, such as the curvilinear and the flamboyant. From here on, rose windows would continue to spread to the rest of the world. They underwent periods of destruction, renaissance, and modernization. They got restored over and over again and still live on today as religious relics. So what is it about rose windows that have fascinated the medieval world, which many of us have no clue of? See, for its creators, the classical rose window represents a range of fundamental concepts. They are light, circle, cycle, microcosm, microcosm relationship, order, and geometry. These concepts are expressed through the rose window's shape, material, stained glass images and color, and exterior tracery design. Let's talk about light and how the rose window displays it both physically and symbolically. First, there's the outside light that seeps into the cathedral through the rose window. As it does, the stained glass turns it into colorful lights. This gives the allure that through light comes the universe. This idea is fundamental to the medieval Christians because light is one of the first things that the biblical God created. Virtually all religions and myths have a creation narrative. In them, light is not necessarily the first thing that's created. However, it is often associated with high-ranking creator deities such as Zeus, Ahura Mazda, Ra, and Brahma. The ancient association of light with creation is likely due to the importance of the sun's life-giving energy to the planet. 
They aren't far off from modern science view on the creation of the universe. According to today's leading theory, the universe began with a big bang of energy. From that initial burst eventually came the many galaxies of stars and planets. The idea of one form of energy producing a myriad of things is reflected in the ancient Taoist saying, the 10,000 things, which draws our attention back to the rose window. From white light comes the many colors that exist. Medieval rose window creators have also shown the importance of light through symbolism using Christ. Christ represents light. Christ or God will be put at the center because according to Christians, it is through them that everything exists. In other words, through light, everything exists, creating a universe. Note that there are many non-creator deities who also represent light in world myths, such as Sol and Apollo both of which have been associated with Jesus. To the medieval thinker, the universe, or God, is a circular shape. This is illustrated with the image of God drawing a circle with a compass. A popular saying among theologians at the time was that God is an infinite sphere whose circumference is nowhere and whose center is everywhere. This expression is found in the Liber Philosophorum, a Latin booklet consisting of definitions of what God is. Today, the shape of the universe is a topic of great debate, but there are three leading theories. The universe has a positive curvature, which can make it spherical. The universe has a negative curvature, which makes it have a saddle shape. Or the universe is completely flat. The jury is still out. Regardless, the circle has been a sacred shape to many ancient religions. It's often referred to as a wheel. Another name for the rose window is a wheel window. There's, for example, the Norse sun wheel, the Buddhist dharma wheel, and the Native American medicine wheel, which are all associated with light and sun. The shape of the sun, as well as the cycles associated with it, could have greatly contributed to the medieval idea of the universe and God as a circle. The circular shape of the rose window also conveys a cycle, and that all things are subject to the eternal cycle of the universe. Planets, time, seasons, even personal life events. A well-known medieval allegory seen on rose windows is that of Fortuna and her wheel. Fortuna is the goddess of fate and she controls the wheel of fate. There are smaller figures around the wheel. That's actually one figure whose stature changes depending on where the wheel guides it. At the top, the person reigns, then he dips into misfortune and makes his way back up again. The allegory wishes to express the inescapable cycle of fortune and misfortune, good and bad, victory and losses, for all humans with no exception. There are rose windows that show the embodiment of vices and virtues along with the zodiac signs. Some believe that it illustrates the ongoing struggle of the soul throughout daily life, also known as psychomachia. Others believe that it's a reflection of the medieval belief in astrology, where the position of the stars and planets at the time of a person's birth influences their personality, which includes vices and virtues. But I like to believe that it represents the cycle of vices and virtues that societies as a whole go through. How do you read this combination of symbolism? Let me know in the comments below. So cycles exist everywhere, which leads us to the next point. The late Middle Ages are very keen on the subject of macrocosm and microcosm relationship, which is famously expressed as, as above, so below. In essence, the human body and the affairs of humans are like a universe only on a smaller scale. This relationship is frequently found on rose windows as the 12 constellations in the sky versus the 12 labors of the year. Constellations are a group of stars that have been named based on the patterns they form, and there are 88 recognized constellations. The 12 constellations that form the zodiac are those that the sun appears to pass through in a circular path from the perspective of the earth, which orbits the sun once a year. Constellations of the sky are parallel to the labors of the year, 
the time it takes the Earth to go through those 12 constellations is a year, which is also divided into 12 months, each represented by the labor that is associated with that month. Order and hierarchy are popular themes in rose windows, especially with Christian narratives. Christ would be at the center, and from him emanates the Christian themes. Often, it's the Virgin Mary at the center. From her emanates the life of Jesus. The shape of the circle helps give the idea of a sequence. In some windows, like this one at the Shaft Cathedral, non-Christian elements are combined to add meaning. Zodiac signs, expressing time, the heavens, and human affairs, are seen surrounding Christ, indicating that his divinity rules the entire cosmos. Sometimes rose windows only display pagan iconographies or representations of elements. Philosophy is a popular figure in rose windows. This Greek-derived word literally means love of wisdom. In this rose window at the Long Cathedral, philosophy placed at the center is an attempt to show that the mind is at the center of all. Education was crucial. The medieval erudites believed that in order to elevate the mind, the men or societies must be proficient in the seven liberal arts. This is expressed by philosophy at the center being surrounded by the personification of each liberal art, grammar, rhetoric, dialectic or reasoning, music, arithmetic, geometry, astronomy. The Cathedral of Laon adds medicine to make it more complete. Lastly, we have geometry, the expression of mathematical and cyclical patterns that occurs in the heavens as it occurs below it. The rose window, full of geometrical patterns, is ultimately the expression of the universe. In fact, all the themes that we've spoken of, light, circle, cycle, micro and macrocosm, order and geometry, all have to do with the universe, the cosmos. Some patrons of rose windows have even wanted to encapsulate all that makes up the cosmos into a single rose window, such as the Lausanne window, meshing in orderly fashion the years, seasons, months, winds, heavens. The need to explain the universe is one of humanity's strong impulses. All cultures, at one point or another, are driven to pack their philosophical and cosmological views into a geometrical shape. The ancient Chinese do so with their yin-yang symbol, the Muslims with their geometrical art on their mosques. In medieval Europe, this is done through the rose window. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you next time. And a special thanks to my Patreon supporters. Your support really helps keep this channel going. If you haven't already, consider becoming a Patreon subscriber to help this channel evolve. Click the link in the description box below. Another great way to help is by sharing my videos. Thank you so much. See you next time.